Hey everybody, welcome back. So this week we are really going to get into the... Wait a minute. Okay. I think we should start by saying last week we ended our episode with this. Uh, next week we start putting back all the glass that we've been taking out. <laughs> <laughs> And we were very wrong. <laughs> and uh, I think a couple of people in the comments said we had not scratched the surface. We had not scratched the surface. I think a couple of people said there's a lot more grinding to do. There is a lot more grinding to do. Yes. We really had barely scratched the surface of it. And I think that we we got a little ahead of ourselves because we were hoping that by this week the grinding would be done. We knew that there was more to be done. We did say that there was more grinding to be done. But we were hoping that by this week we would have all the grinding out of the way and we'd be at least ready to start fiberglass or in the process of starting it. Unfortunately, the weather has not been our friend this week. We've had a lot of rain and a lot of other delays that are kind of beyond our control. So we've... On top of the fact that there's a lot more grinding to do. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we have done more grinding we've done, we've since done. the last episode, but there's still a lot more to do. It's so hot and you put on all that stuff and it's so miserable. Uh, but yes... There's a lot more grinding to do, so... Um. Thank you so much to everyone who has left a comment for us. We um, haven't been able to keep up with the comments this week. It's just been kind of hectic, even with all the delays, but we're working on it. And we have been reading all the comments. We just haven't yet had a chance to respond to all of them. Another comment that we've gotten a lot from you guys... A lot. It's about Cade not wearing his protective gear while he's grinding outside. We have since remedied that. <laughs> it was a one-time thing and I fussed at him. <laughs> she has ensured it is a one-time <laughs> thing. And he's wearing his protective gear and so am I when we're grinding. Every <laughs> time. Outside, 50 knot gale, upwind, <laughs> Put on mask, gloves, right, gloves, booties. Right. We're not head. taking any chances. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> taken care of. That's taken care. care of. So, uh, so we you? use our, we get dressed up in all of our gear. We use our masks, our respirators, and our goggles, and our gloves, and booties, and body suits. Body and suits with hoods and everything to, to protect ourselves from it and we are listening to you guys and um, taking your advice on a lot of things so one of the things that we have done in order to kind of minimize the the dust around the salon and the whole boat because it kind of gets everywhere is um, to build a little plastic tent around our work area so um, so when Kate is in there grinding, it kind of contains everything. And then we have our shop vac with the, the dryer hose that kind of vents the, the dust and the air out through one of the hatches in the ceiling.
and so far in spite of the fact that we are living on the boat while we're doing this which is kind of a mess um, we've done a pretty good job of filtering out the, the dust and cleaning up after ourselves every day when we're done with our work area we we clean up the dust and so it hasn't been that bad that does slow us down right so there's there's an hour of putting the tent back together and putting on all of the gear and getting the shop vac out and set up and our suction system so that we were we we're creating negative pressure in the tent and then several hours of grinding and then you take all of that down because we have to live here and then several hours of cleaning right. and if it's going to rain in the afternoon well it it we've had several days this week where it was raining at breakfast it's supposed to rain at lunch and rain at dinner but it takes us so long to get all of this junk set up that if there's only like a two or three hour gap between storms we we try and tackle some smaller other projects we can't even we can't even approach that it, it's by the time you get everything set up you have to close all the hatches and tear it all down because it's raining now it's it's a big mess and we can't go for too long because we have to to lock the dogs in the back bedroom so that they're not breathing any of this they're not getting any of this dust on them so in case you guys are wondering what happens to the dogs while we're working on grinding away at the boat this is what they do. They're in our room. We keep it closed off. The door seals pretty well and we keep a towel underneath it so dust doesn't get in here. It stays pretty dust free. It's all sealed up back there. And so uh, we can only do this for like four or five hours before one of them is gonna invariably need to use the restroom. So, so there are a lot of complexities involved with this whole process. It's it's not simple by any means, but we are chipping away at it and, and getting it done. It's just kind of a slow process. It's taking a bit longer than we thought it would. Although saying that now, I know we're supposed to double the amount of time and the amount of money it's supposed to take. Well, I think so you, you thought it would take better. a year, so we're ahead <laughs> yeah, of schedule. We're ahead of schedule, um, as far as we know. <laughs> so another comment that we got a lot of was that one, we need to drop the keel, or two, we need to hang the boat to take the weight off the keel so we can examine and see if there are more cracks. So we had discussed this prior to last week's video, um, and we're, we're thinking it was a pretty good idea, but, you know, do we want to spend that money? Because it is still basically a hook and hang on the, 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 the lift and stuff like that, and it's pricey. Uh, the outpouring of comments that said we should do it that convinced us we went ahead and did it we do listen we you can teach an old dog new tricks and uh yeah so we opened every panel we could in the whole boat and we hung it for about an hour and we went through with a bright flashlight and inspected every bilge every compartment every tab
now that the hull is hanging, that the weight is hanging, it's pulled this open. Okay. And so that is a crack in the hull, and that is a crack. Cracks in that. The problem is you get these little black hairs. Yeah. And they, it's they, hard to tell. It looks like they see like that looks like a crack, and then you're like, oh, that's yeah. not a crack. <laughs> We found no evidence of damage outside of the expected damage of a lateral torsion on the keel. Another comment that you guys made overwhelmingly was watch Expedition Evans or contact Brett and Jade. We have subscribed to Expedition Evans since the beginning of their journey and we have followed them with interest and we have admired their ambitiousness ambitiousness uh, 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 am we, ambitiosity <laughs> you admired how ambitious they were with taking on this huge project never thinking that we were going to end up in their shoes oh uh, we i remember watching their videos two years ago when they were grinding away at their grid going oh man i do not i i wouldn't even know where to begin with that <laughs> kids let's talk about what actual damage has happened to our boat because our damage is different from Brett and Jade's damage. So I'm not the best artist, but here goes. This is a cross section of Flo's hull. If a lateral force is applied to the bottom of the keel, as if the boat was blown sideways into the mud during a hurricane, the keel and keel well would have leverage to pivot around this point here. This would cause a compression force on one side and a tensile force on the other. There is too much material and the compression strength is greater than the tensile strength, so that is where the system would fail first. This would pull the hull away from the grid as the distance from the grid to the keel needs to increase. This explains why all our damage is confined to the area only several inches outward from the center keel well. Right, I love it. I also, love it. this differs from Brett and Jade's uh, hard grounding. In the case of a boat with a hard grounding, a large vertical force is applied to the keel and grid. Again, compression strength wins, and instead of crushing the grid sidewalls, the grid is ripped free of the keel on the outboard edges. This damage will be obvious by the grid separated far from the keel, and the areas at the keel hull joint showing little to no cracking or damage. We did reach out to Brett and Jade at Expedition Evans uh, to get permission to use this clip talking about and showing that when their keel is hanging, it closes the gap in their boat. This is my hope. This is my, like, I don't know, saving grace isn't the right word. But before, I could fit my whole hand under here, and now I can't. It's flush. These are the keel bolts, right? And so that's pushing up on the grid, um, which is pushing up on this, right? So I made a gap right here, but there's not a gap, which means with the keel hanging down under the boat, it sunk this back where it needs to go. Our situation is different in that we need to sit on our keel to push the hull back up to our grid to close that little gap that is formed. And it's only like a two or three millimeter gap. It uh, He could shove his hand into his space. Ours is like three millimeters. It wiggles because it's loose but it doesn't actually move that far. It doesn't actually sag down that much. And that's because it's still attached about four or five inches in. It's just, it has no leverage to hold the keel in place anymore. And that is what needs to be repaired. And that is why we need to sit on our keel to push our hull back up into our grid and then re-tab and re-glass that whole radius on the inside to stiffen and make sure it's firmly attached to our grid. So far, the crowd has not steered us wrong, so please, please let us know what you think.
Uh, I want to spend send a special shout out to uh, Brett and Jade for uh, of Expedition Evans for letting us uh, use their clip. Good luck, Brett and Jade, on your trip to the Azores. We are uh, we we wish you uh, fair winds and following seas, and I'm I'm sure it will be the trip of a lifetime. So uh, that's it this week. Next week, more grinding, and we do some more grinding. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you can get notifications when a new video drops. And follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at For Love of Wind. See you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> I didn't have my thought queued up.